Awesome. Here with Benny Gerard for the uh, Room Movement Project. Super excited to have Benny on the line. I've been uh, wanting to catch up and, and go through the details of the CrossFit regionals. You know, since it happened, I was you know watching the drama from the other side of the world. Now sitting in Poland, uh, Benny, congratulations, mate! Awesome to see you uh, get that that result and right down to the wire. Couldn't have been any more exciting. Yeah, thanks, Apes Cakes. Like it's been a pretty emotional roller coaster since the weekend. You know, and it's all slowly sinking in. But yeah, the way I got there was um pretty important and um, I think it was more special than actually making it to the CrossFit game so so you've yeah, like you've weird. dealt with the disappointment before you know with your uh, disqualified workout in the open a couple of years back um, did you feel like oh it's happening again well to be honest that first day like it, it crushed me like I was pretty down and out mentally and yeah it did bring a lot of flashbacks from um Early on in the sport, like I got DQ'd, um, I got super sick before last year's regionals. I was in 29th place after the first day this year, and I was just like, "What the hell? Like, am I cursed? Like, is this sport not meant for me?" But um, yeah, I got myself together, and I came back strong in the second day, and yeah, just focused on my performance, and yeah, I felt like I was a bit of an underdog, and. It kind of worked in my favour. Yeah, did it did it change your mindset a bit? Sort of being, you know, so far behind. I guess you know you, you're used to training with Khan and and those guys, and you know that you you know your workouts. Like you guys know each other. You know you know who's better at which workouts and and that stuff. You know what the results going to be half the time before anyone else does. You know, knowing that you're at that level, um, but then being so far behind. You know, did that what what did that mean for you going into those first events on the day two? Yeah, it was really tough to process. Um, like I went into the regionals, qualified second. I was in the main heat, right in the middle, like next to Rob Fort, Carl Porter, like um, all the big dogs. And then, yeah, second day, I was in the third heat. There were a couple of Asians next to me and like people that were sort of, I don't like judging anyone, but like, yeah, I knew I had to like perform and not compare myself to the people in that heat. So... Yeah, that day two, the first workout, I just went out hard from the start, got a lead, um, just got the crowd behind me, was pumping them up as I was moving forward, and it was a yeah twenty six minute chipper, so I just used the crowd to to get the best out of my performance and managed to take sixth place and sort of set the standard for that first uh, first event on day two, and then yeah took a um, a ninth place in the handstand and walk and then. Went big on the snatch with um, took a bit of a risk and it paid off and I took fifth place there. Yeah, so we snatched up at my place when you were up recently and um, you know you snatched one twenty for the first time in a fair while. What were you thinking going into the the snatch? Like we we uh, we thinking this is PB time. We were thinking like yeah, like uh, what was the mindset? Yeah, I knew I had to take a risk. Like the position I was on on the leaderboard wasn't good, and being conservative wasn't even an option it was um yeah just go big or pretty much go home like so I think I was probably the closest to my max out of any other athlete on the floor yeah really I hit 256 yeah so 117 kilos yeah with my max being 122 yeah so so yeah, what was the go with the rest people. periods it was like 30 second yeah we had to do a 250 foot handstand walk yep for time yep and that was a three-minute cap. So I finished that in 2.09. Yep. So then you get the remaining time to rest plus a minute 40 seconds yeah, wow. of like programmed rest. So yeah, wow. yeah, you've got to be ready to snatch like two attempts around sort of 85% and above after you've just done a handstand walk. So that was a challenge in itself. How did you feel on the lockout? Was it solid? Yeah, the lockout was fine. It was just my lower back from yeah. the poor positioning on the handstand wall. Yeah. And pulling off the floor was a lot heavier than than usual. But it was just adrenaline that sort of stuck that lift for me and fired me out for the third day. Yeah, it's awesome. It was, I guess, tough. You know, we were talking a little bit after day one and, you know, like, it's uh, there's never an easy way to, to sort of deal with with that stuff like it's it's always going to be a slap in the face and then you know to turn that 
into believing, you know, that it's going to happen again is, is, is such a huge challenge. Like I, I still, uh, you know, I'm, st- I'm still in a bit of shock, you know, to be honest that you were able to put that behind you and then come out, you know, so strong in the, on the last day, like were you, were you thinking going into day three that if everything goes well, you, you could, you could, uh, you could like, you know, get a spot. I never counted myself out, yeah. but to be, to be honest, like I didn't think that I had a chance to get back into the top five. Hmm. Like my mindset wasn't about that. It was just about performing to the best of my ability and just proving to myself that and um, all my training and all the energy and time I've put into the sport and just sort of showing my fans and family that that, that was all I had. Yep. And um yeah, each event that went past, like I, I was making big jumps up the leaderboard and then, yeah, I managed to get within striking distance on that last event. So was it all the grid league training that really, like, helped you come up with that win on the on the last event? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was spent three months in the US and... It's all about barbell speed, just, yeah. The short, fast, explosive workouts and yeah. I was super confident going into it. Yeah. And there was a lot of pressure on the boys in front of me, and I think they did feel that pressure, and and it affected their performance a lot. They because they thought you know they knew it was going to be a, a strong one for you. Do you think, or like just with with each other as well? Yeah, they they knew it was going to be a great workout for me, and they knew that I was behind them, and they knew that they had to perform and sort of kind of place highly to get their ticket to the games and yeah I feel like a lot of the anxiety and the nerves and and that pressure that they had on themselves like affected their performance yeah at the end there because a fair few guys missed missed reps on that last one didn't they or second last bar on the on the cleans yeah there was people that messed up their muscle ups and yep. sort of fell through the rings and got folded on the cleans and stuff that doesn't typically happen yep. in training but in competition, you just never know. Yeah, obviously a lot of fatigue by that stage as well. Yeah, for sure. We had a pretty big volume weekend and that was the very last piece and it, it sort of showed the people that could, could handle it at the end there. Back to like the strength and conditioning and um, you know physical prep side of things, that's a lot, a lot of people who are interested in Real Movement Project and the people who I work with, you know, personal trainers and coaches. Um, how do you feel at the end of such a big weekend of training? Like it's basically like spending you know three days in the gym killing yourself. Most people can't fathom it. What does it feel like the next day? Well, the next day, like once the three days is completed, uh, your body is pretty wrecked. Like you have to take pretty much two, three days off yeah. to get rid of the soreness and just have to nourish your body with quality food and make sure you're hydrating and sleeping and yeah, I'd had a lot of body work throughout the weekend from um, Balance Health and Performance. So they took care of like all my soft tissue and made sure that my body was in alignment. Yep. And without all that extra stuff, I don't think people would be in good shape after three days now. You obviously celebrated a bit. It was a big moment for you. Um, did it hit you like a ton of bricks when you come down from the, from the CrossFit as well as the celebrations? Yeah, it was pretty surreal. On the Monday, like, I was just super sore and, like, I had a few drinks with family and friends. So that didn't really help. And, um, yeah, the Tuesday, Wednesday, I was, like, just receiving so many texts and messages and phone calls and congrats. And yeah, I just tried to ride the wave and I was just, just on a high pretty much all week. And then um, tried to just use that motivation and that enthusiasm that I had to just ripped straight back into training once my body recovered and yep. yeah, I'm just I keep it going. Yeah, how did it feel going back into training now that you know training has a different purpose, I guess, a different meaning for you right now compared to um yeah, any time in the past, you know, you're preparing to go to the you know World Games. Yeah, the first workout I did back in training, I, I kicked it off with an event from the CrossFit Games that sort of intimidated me and I wanted to just test it out to prove to myself that I can do it and Yeah. A lot of the stuff that I've seen at the CrossFit Games I haven't tried because, yeah, I didn't have that purpose or yep. or the, the reason to do it, but yeah. How did you now go on that, on that workout? What was it? I was the, it was called the Burden Run. 
from 2013 games. Yep. It was um, a three-mile run. And then you get back, you have to flip. It was called a pig, so it's a simulated attire. Yep. It was a 225-kilo tire down the field. And then you had to carry a log for 600 metres. And then you had to drag a sled 60 metres. It was 140 kilos. So. Yeah. Yeah, it took me about 31 minutes. Would have been good for about seventh place at the games that year. Yeah. Is that what uh, did you use a, a big tire or? Nah, Alpha Fit actually sent me. Oh, down you've got there, yeah. Yeah, the wombat. Yeah. Yeah, we used it up at your. Exactly. Yeah, we had one at Byron and, up at Byron. Yeah. Yeah, I think it ended up being around about fifty flips with four twenty kilo plates added to it, so it was pretty rough. Yes, it's massive. How'd you pull up from that? Yeah, not too bad. My biceps were. Yeah. jacked from trying to flip it, but yeah, I was able to train the next day, not too beat up. Yeah, it's mostly strongman style stuff, so mostly concentric, doesn't give you quite as much muscle damage generally, but the volume's super high, so still going to take it out. Yeah, for sure. I think I'm just willing to test these events and try and expose myself mentally as much as physically, so that when I get over there, like, I won't be in for a rude shock. Yeah. So we've been working a little bit as well on your nutrition side, you know, coming to a couple of the Real Movement Level 1 workshops, you sort of saw a bit about, you know, what I talk about, what I've, you know, used with, uh, you know, with the Roosters in Rugby League and, um, you know, Ali Day and these guys that I've worked with in other sports. Um, what, are, what are you working on at the moment or what have you, what have you sort of changed um, in terms of your, how you're looking after yourself to get the best out of yourself for this, uh, for, the, for the upcoming event? Yeah, since going to the real movement level one and hanging out with yourself, like I'm a lot more aware and educated of what's going into my body. Um, like I have filtered water every day now, yep. and yeah, normal water tastes weird to me, which I I can relate to you now. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, and a lot of the timings of my meals, like making sure that yeah, I'm nourishing my body after my workouts and yeah. And just getting a good mix of yeah, proteins, fats, and carbs, but just the right types that suit my body as well. Yeah. Like, Try to get some more whole foods in there. Hey, you had a bit of a change to you know, getting just yeah, getting those basics in all the time, veggies and quality meats. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it a little bit more organic and yep. adding some of those superfoods to my shakes now. And yep. Yeah, a lot more veggies and not as many carbs and pretty much eliminated all dairy now. So, okay. Yeah, my body feels pretty good running well awesome yeah it's it's interesting you know to see the difference that comes out when when guys start to um put put some focus on that stuff you know working in rugby league you see the worst of it and you you know you see some dedicated guys who are who are willing to eat pretty well but you know you take guys a lot of guys in the footy scene they're just going to eat anything and i guess there's a part of that mentality for you know for some in the crossfit scene or especially some of the elite guys in crossfit you know like to post about smash themselves with sugar and uh, and that sort of stuff but yes you can potentially um, run on that and energy wise it, it may work for you but um, in terms of rebuilding connective tissue in terms of immune function in terms of uh, neurotransmitter function at these like high levels, it's definitely not suboptimal. And you know, if you look back at you know the fittest people throughout history, if you look at you know ancient Greece and what they were doing in terms of their nutrition, the Romans, and if you look at where the Vatican Guard came from, you know the the strongest, fittest guys in Europe, um, they always had special foods that they used, and the ability to apply those special foods was part of the reason why they were special themselves and valued as athletes and. Um, you know, that was, that was as much a part of being, you know, the best version of yourself at that stage was about being, you know, a philosopher and strong and getting the nutrition stuff right. So, you know, that's, um, exciting to see you taking on a bit of that, um, Benny and, you know, it is a journey and it's great to see you, you learning and making it your own, you know, but that's really what it's about. Um, but if it's, you know, if it can help you do what, um, yeah, Ali Day obviously, had a big turnaround, you know, you've uh, seen a bit of the, what's, what we did with, with him uh, in terms of changing his nutrition and, you know, he went from a chronic fatigue state where he wasn't even able to compete to, to, uh, to, to winning, you know, the, um, the national competition 
in the last season. And it's, I guess it's a little bit of the same story for yourself. You know, last year it was, you know, you didn't, you, you were still able to compete, but you definitely weren't in the state that you were in to, um, you, you weren't in the state to be able to, you know, to, to, to put your best foot forward. And this year, um, you know, despite, you know, the challenges were more around technical side of things and, you know, maybe some of the other, you know, politics or whatever, but physically, um, there's a big difference, I guess, between what you come up with this year and, you know, what you were able to do last year. Yeah, for sure. Last year, I was on a drip about four days out. I was on intravenous antibiotics, oral antibiotics, trying to get rid of my glands that were all swollen up. I couldn't swallow, couldn't digest food for four days out. And yeah, I definitely didn't want to put myself in that position this year. And I think um, making some of those changes is more than just physical and more than just your performance. Like your mental acuity and like your mood is a lot more stable. You don't have those um, peaks and troughs when you're just digesting sugar and some of that crap that I used to do. So, yeah, it's really paid off for me. And the mental side of it is what it's going to come down to. Are you are you nervous already? Oh, I'd say, yeah, a little bit nervous. It's like I'm trying to prepare myself yeah. as best I can. And, yeah, I am focusing on a lot of the mental toughness, trying to rip into some audio books and exposing myself to those longer events that I know I'm going to struggle with and yeah just give myself the best chance yeah that's uh that's where the belief comes from isn't it you know the belief comes from your training the belief comes from doing the hard work you're not trying to fool yourself into you know believing that you can do something that you haven't done the work for it's about doing the work and then you know building the belief off the back of that um, you know, I, I've seen a big change in you, Benny, over the last couple of years as you've had more confidence, you know, building yourself as a coach, you know, a, a, as an athlete um, and spending some time in, in the US. I 100% believe that travel is one of the essential parts of becoming the best version of yourself. You know, you spent some time in America. How do you think that affected your preparation for this year and, and the guys you spent time with over there? Yeah, it was huge. Like the three months I spent in the US around like-minded people that I really connected with and related well to. I was able to take that back to Australia and just sort of feed off that. And Yeah, I strongly believe like the five people you hang out with the most, like you're going to become an average of those five people. So yeah, I'm really, uh, choose wisely who I spend my time with now and yeah, I make sure that I'm always moving forward. Hopefully that's going to rub off on me with a bit more of your, uh, Biceps, no, no. It's always it's good hanging around with you as well, Benny, because I, you know, that's what one of the reasons why you know I really like working with you with real movement is because you're such a positive guy and you're just putting all your energy into what you do. So, um, just yeah, really, really excited for you. Really happy that you've you know finally um, got this opportunity. I don't think anyone's deserved it more or worked harder for it um, than you. And I'm pretty sure you know a lot of people can uh, will agree with me on that. So. You know, just want to wish you the best of luck for that, and um, yeah, we'll be we'll be in touch uh, through the preparation, and and then we'll be following how you go. So everyone in the real movement community is super excited um, to su to support you. You know, there are a lot of comments up in the group and guys tracking your progress. So you know, everyone in the real movement community is is definitely behind you, and um, looking forward to to seeing you put your best foot forward. Uh, in the states and uh yeah like let's keep growing this gro global network so we can give more people the chance to um go and train in other parts of the world that's a big part of what, why i'm over here in poland uh, i've been spending time in germany denmark slovenia um holland just building the network so that you know guys from australia guys from europe can go and you know spend time with each other because i feel like if we can get that stuff going it's it's going to be unstoppable in terms of the improvement that we can get in coaches and training and and methods um, you know, this global network is, is such a, such an important part of it. And on the human side as well, you know, just getting out of your comfort zone and being, being a different guy sometime and, um, all that sort of side of things is, uh, super exciting. So thanks for all your support with, with real movement and, uh, looking forward to, to taking you around the world to teach more people about, you know, what it is you do and how you do it as well. Uh, means a lot, Keeks. Thanks, Keeks, mate. Awesome, Benny. Talk to you soon, brother. Thanks, Keeks. See you, bro.